Westheimer, sex therapist known to millions as Dr. Ruth, dies at 96. Her frankness on her long-running radio and TV call-in shows made her a go-to guide for tips on lovemaking. Ruth Westheimer, a child survivor of the Holocaust who became known to millions as Dr. Ruth, the perky sex sex therapist whose frankness on her long-running radio and television call-in shows made her a go-to guide for tips on the art and science of lovemaking, died July 12th at her home in Manhattan. She was 96. Her death was confirmed by Pierre Lahou, a publicist and her co-author on several books, but no cause was noted. Described as the first superstar sex therapist, Drive Westheimer was over 50 when she debuted in 1980 on New York's WYNY with Sexually Speaking. The radio program initially aired in 15-minute installments and was later syndicated and extended to two hours to accommodate the onslaught of queries she received from callers. More than a few listeners professed that she had saved their marriages. Cable television viewers knew her as the prim, matronly host in the 1980s of Good Sex with Dr. Ruth Westheimer and as a frequent guest on late-night talk shows. At four foot seven, she often was seen perched on a seat, bedecked in pearls, cheerfully dispensing advice on best practices in the sack. Have good sex, she trilled in her instantly recognizable German-inflected voice. Drive Westheimer's old-world accent, at times seemingly incongruous with her discussion of intimate anatomy and its usage, was one of the few traces of her life before she came to the United States. Born to an Orthodox Jewish family in Germany, she survived the Holocaust at a Swiss orphanage where her parents sent her before they perished. I was left with a feeling that because I was not killed by the Nazis, because I survived, I had an obligation to make a dent in the world. Drive Westheimer once told an interviewer. What she did not know, she added, was that the dent would entail her. Talking about sex from morning to night. After the war, she went to Israel where she joined the Haganah paramilitary group fighting for Jewish statehood, and where, she said, she lost her virginity in a hayloft. Later moves took her to France and to New York, where she learned English before studying counseling. Drive Westheimer taught university courses in human sexuality before a producer at WYNY, an NBC affiliate, engaged her for a quarter-hour segment, first broadcast on Sundays after midnight. Within a year, she had graduated to the 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. slot. Early fans donned t-shirts reading, Sex on Sunday? You bet! The sexual revolution that began two decades earlier had liberated the masses from taboos but had done precious little to relieve problems such as erectile dysfunction and inability to attain orgasm. Like Julia Child charging onto public television to teach French cooking, Drive Westheimer took to the radio waves to explain, in straightforward fashion, the ways of making love. She was not the first on-air therapist. Joyce Brothers, for one, had preceded her by a generation. But few, if any, could match Drive Westheimer's combination of candor and can-do cheer. Furthermore, she speculated, people found her unthreatening. If I had been a tall blonde in a miniskirt and décolleté, she said to the Sunday Times of London, if I had been young and pretty it wouldn't have worked. Drive Westheimer told her listeners that Anything two consenting adults do in the privacy of their own bedroom is all right with me. Masturbation, fantasies, love dolls, they were all fine by her. Once, Newsweek magazine reported her response when she was asked for her opinion on a particular unconventional sexual practice. What's wrong? She replied. With peanut butter or new uses for onion rings as long as there's a relationship? Her principal concern was safety. The New York Times recorded her reply to one young woman who, like so many others, had called because she was contemplating losing her virginity. Don't do it, Drive Westheimer said. I hear in your question that he is putting pressure on you. Listen to that inner voice that says you would like to wait. Tell him that Drive Westheimer told you that you can hug and kiss and neck and pet, but that you are just not ready. Whenever she was ready, Drive Westheimer cautioned the woman, she should not forget a reliable contraceptive. Many calls came from members of the opposite sex. Two of the problems Drive Westheimer addressed most frequently over the years, she noted, were premature ejaculation and the inability to maintain an erection. Men, all of you are ignorant, she once said. 
You are constantly worried about the size of the penis. Let's shout it from the rooftops. The size of the penis has nothing to do with the sexual satisfaction of the woman. She became an irresistible subject of parodies, including on Saturday Night Live. Some mental health professionals cautioned that it was impossible for her to properly diagnose or counsel a person in a brief exchange conducted on the air. Drive Westheimer countered that she simply was educating listeners so that they could prevent unintended pregnancies, avoid venereal disease, and improve their sex lives. The critics aside, it was practically unanimous. She made good television. Once you've talked sex with Dr. Ruth. TV critic Tom Shales once wrote,